I'm clearly not at the hotel where the Silva method uh, was held. My name's Carolyn and I have a website called Words for Winning and what I do is I republish out of print books. So you may have uh, come across Helene Hadsel, who's famous for winning every prize she ever desired. I've done all of her books and I've started on Tag Powell's. Now, uh, Helene worked for Jose Silva and Tag Powell uh, was a Silva instructor. And so uh, through all these Silva touch points, I decided that I was gonna become a Silva instructor. And one of the things that you need to do in that process is take the Silva method five times because you can't teach what you don't know inside out and backwards. Very logical, makes sense. Now, I had taken the Silva method once and then I was assisting in Toronto, very similar to what Helene used to do with Jose. And I took the Silva method um, uh, instructor training program and then I realized I didn't I only had it once so this um, August I went down to Connecticut and took it with Ken Casilla now the timing was tight so what happened was is I wear more than one crown I'm the contest queen and I teach others how to find, organize, enter, and win sweepstakes contests and giveaway. And the annual National Sweepstakes Convention was in Las Vegas this year from August 1st to 4th. So July 31st, I flew to Vegas. I took the red eye back on the 5th, got here on the 6th, I unpacked, I repacked, and on the 7th, I drove to Connecticut. I was extremely tired. Um, because it was Vegas, I was trying to do live streams every night from Vegas talking about the convention. I think I did two, I did two out of four. Um, no, I got three out of four, and then I did the fourth when I visited Wendy, who I went to the convention with. We, we caught that up. And it was great to have another voice about the convention. So I was so tired, I managed to get two of the Silva Instructor Trainings um, days live streamed while I was in Connecticut, but the time got away from me, and the Wi-Fi in the hotel was terrible, terrible. So I just waited till I got home and this is the final day, day four. Now the Silva Method four day intensive is broken up into um, two sections. The first is called the Silva Life Systems and the second part is called the Silva Intuition System. And it all, everything you learn, one step and one technique and one meditation and one lesson builds upon the other to lead up to the afternoon of day four, um, which is interesting. Now, what was really cool was day four actually happened on August. So day one was August 8th, which is, if you like astrology like I do, it was a Lionsgate portal. And then day four was August 11, Jose Silva's birthday. How appropriate to be learning the Silva method on Jose's birthday. I. I don't remember what year he was born, so I don't know how old he would have been, because this year, 2024, Helene Hadsell would have been 100 had she lived, and I've been doing some special videos and things on Words for Winning, um, celebrating her 100th birthday, but it was Jose's birthday on August 11th. That was cool. Um, I should go and do a blog post and just backdate it. <laughs> so, if, um, so if you want to go back, and watch the other videos you can catch up on days uh, one to four now on a uh, TikTok where I'm live streaming um, they disappear after you see them live but if you head over to my YouTube channel you can catch the previous days um, so one of the things that I learned uh, hall of viewing which is one of the techniques is mirror the mind with source energy so if you're looking for an answer from your higher self, you do hall of viewing. So mirror of the mind is the technique you use if you want to manifest a specific outcome or thing. If you need an answer from the universe like, hey, this is what I think is good, but I need some direction, that's when you use hall of viewing. So, and then this, he asked this question, it was so good I had to write it down. Are you busy getting what you want in your life? Think about that. Are you busy getting what you want in your life? 
Um, so he said he wor uh, I wrote down word fulfillment better than success. And so I, I did a little thing here and uh, be and then have and then doing. And he hung out with the coolest people like in other videos you're gonna see me mention other people. He's hung out with Ram Dass. Now you remember you have to remember and I stated it in the other videos, Ken was the youngest silver instructor ever certified at 19 in 1971. So he's hung out with a lot of really cool people, including Ram Dass and John um, Cabot Zinn. So what we're working on at this point in the program is your connection to purpose. Why are you here? Okay. What do you like and love? What, what do you do? What you do, where you are, who you are with? Answer those questions. And I know I'm on my right path because I'm bringing uh, previous teachings and bringing them to the public. And combining those teachings with my own path and other people's path to modernize it and to bring it to today. So I know I'm on the right path. However, how the next steps and how the next level of this business, this teachings, this progression looks like, that's where I'm using the hollow viewing um, techniques. So you're planting seeds of purpose and um, you, gradu you, you graduate to meditation. So then we did a subjective exercise called connection to purpose. So you ask source energy. Now again, I'm just giving you the highlights. Like if you're wondering like, what is she? She's not really teaching. No, you have to go and take the silver method. This is just the highlights of an extremely intense four days. Ken runs a program from nine in the morning till seven at night, four days in a row. You are wiped by the end of the day and you meditate a heck of a lot. Um, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? What does it look like and feel like and sound like? So you want a 3D kind of experience. What do I have to do or be um, or become in order to manifest, excel, etc.? So you may have heard this before. You don't manifest what you want. You manifest who you are. So I get a lot of people messaging me saying, I can't, you know, I've been trying to manifest this. Well, I see it, I, I visualize it, I can see myself there. Well, there's some part of them that doesn't believe it won't, will come true. You have to live in the end result. So by the time it manifests, it's almost like, oh, yeah, okay. It's m blase and mundane. Um, Helene has a chapter in her her book, The Name It Claim It Game, called Desire Versus Knowing. And desire is excited and, and anxious, and knowing is calm. So you have to get to knowing. That's the key. And this is where a lot of people get stuck. Um, so what must I release? Here's the other side of it. What must I release or let go of? Right? Jack Canfield gave it a great experience that people, you know, um, have a handful of peanuts and they're they're weevily peanuts he says so most of the protein is in the weevils <laughs> and they come to a buffet they come they come to their they're in a space and they come to a door and there's somebody standing at the door and the doors are open and he can see inside and there's this buffet amazing there's every kind of food there's there's a seafood section and a salad section and a dessert section and a and cocktail section and like everything you can think of is in this this um, grand ballroom just full of food and people eating and enjoying themselves and um, the the person at the door says would you like to come in and they're like yes and he says oh you have to leave the peanuts and people just won't let go. He's like, people won't let go of the peanuts to have the buffet. They're so, this is the, as they say, the devil they know. And they're so comfortable with these weevily peanuts that they won't drop them and go into the ballroom because it's not comfortable, it's not familiar, 
you don't know anybody in the room, um, you know, this type of thing. Where do, where do I sit? People are uncomfortable stepping into the unknown. And everything you want is on the other side of that. And that's uh, one of the keys. So what, and then what must I embrace? Anything else? So these are the questions that you're asking in your meditation. Um, our way of thinking affects what we see. And I teach this as the contest queen. So I always say I can see the word win at 100 paces because Ken talked about the reticular activator. So I say what, because I like to enter sweepstakes, my reticular activator is turned on and I can spot the word win at 100 paces. And it's the same thing for your uh, business, your romantic life, your job search. If you're tuned into something, that reticular activator is now filtering those things in. They've always been there. It's just now you see them. So it's a, another example is when you go to look buy a car and you go and you test drive a few and you drive a, you test drive like a, a, a white Jetta, Volkswagen Jetta. And suddenly when you're driving around, you're, you know, you haven't decided on the car, you're driving around and you're thinking and you spot so many Jettas on the road. Well, they've always been there, but you're just now, your reticular activator is turned on. So you want to turn that on for your life purpose. And he also says, you hear what you want to hear. This is like, um, you've probably heard this example many times, like at a crime scene, if something happens, an accident, and there was like 10 witnesses and the police go and they interview every witness. Every single witness is gonna have a different account because they're putting it through their filter. Their life experience, how they perceive the world is how they are going to see. So it's not what happens to you, it's what you believe happens to you. That one was Robert Edward Grant. I love him, he's a great teacher too. So. Robert Ohato teaches this, power and powerlessness. I can only change me, I can't change others. It's also like the um, AA, they have the, um, not the Lord's Prayer, it's the, it's escaping me at the moment. Uh, God, give me the wisdom to change what I can, um, know what I can't, and the wisdom to uh, know the difference. It's just the same thing. So he says, we are all psychic geniuses, but it means nothing if you don't use it for the betterment of yourself and humanity. And we're all, oh, grant me the serenity to accept. Thank you, uh, Darina. I appreciate that. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's basically power and powerlessness. And you have to know the difference but anyway we're all psychic geniuses people say well I'm not intuitive well how many times have you said my spidey sense is going off or I have a gut feeling about that or I kind of knew that that's your intuition how many I, I remember even mundane things like one time I was getting dressed to go visit some friends they just had a they've had a baby and I wanted to go visit and take some gifts and we were just gonna have like an afternoon, um, you know, afternoon tea out in the backyard because it was a beautiful day like this. And I was getting dressed in this particular white sleeveless shirt that I had and a little tie. It was a hot minute ago. And I thought to myself, if I wear this, that baby is gonna spit up at me. And I thought, what a stupid thought. Your intuition is fast. It's always faster than your logic. As soon as your logic steps in, mm -mm. That's why people think when they're doing some of these meditations, they're making it up. Yeah, that's the point. Your intuition is faster than your brain. So, um, of course, that's exactly what happened. I go, I visit, the baby throws up all over me, and I'm like, I knew that. If I, why didn't I bring an extra shirt or wear a different shirt? But it's we have those kind of things all the time in our lives, and we never listen. I remember being on the bus one time, and I thought, I should get off here and go that way. Why would I do that? I get all the way home and I find out, like I was 17, and I thought, and there was no cell phones back in those days, nothing. So I get all the way home and I have a message. My boyfriend had an accident and he broke his nose and he was at that hospital. Like had I got off there and taken the bus over, I would have seen him at the hospital. 
Like, but I knew that. My intuition's like, get off and go that way. Why would I do that? My brain kicked in and said, that's silly. No, always listen to it. And remember, we're a work in progress. Like, you, this doesn't stop. Everyone seems to be trying to get to this place of perfection. First of all, that's never going to happen. Second of all, you are going to be learning till the day you die. Um, now, I have a little bit of a cryptic message here that I wrote down. Human body and kingdom. I have no idea why, why I wrote that. And then he talked about, we were doing um, mental projection exercises. And it's funny because I was thinking earlier about doing this live stream and what I was talking about, about the fourth day. And it occurred to me that some of the exercises we do, because we, we do mental, so he talks about a soul mold, about physical, cellular, molecular, your atomic and spirit levels. And one of the things we do is we do these meditations and we go into our hand and we see the blood vessels and we see bones and we see the skin and we see and we project ourselves into the wall and we project ourselves into a plant and we project ourselves you know and we think of an animal that we know like we we project ourselves in all of these things and I thought you know it occurred to me that it's very similar to NDEs because if you listen I love Next Level Soul podcast and he's interviewed so many people that have had NDEs and they all talk about you know maybe floating above themselves in an operating room and hearing what the doctors say and then going through walls or and doing this and doing that and I thought that's the point of those meditations because that's just our consciousness we can do it when we die why can't we do it while we're alive it's the same thing it's no different we can do all the same things why do we think we're limited it's so fascinating so he talked about a book called how God changes your brain and I missed some of the points he was going so fast and I couldn't write fast enough but one is faith and hope two is meditation three is exercise both vigorous and slow so like Tai Chi and like hit um, intellectual stimulation so um, one of them was the memory pegs that we learn in the Silva technique smiling and laughing who knew who knew that that could change your brain and yawning actually resets your brain and so I yeah I missed a, a point there um, and then he talked about the hero pose Who's seen the hero pose? Let's do the hero pose. We all know the hero pose. Vishen um, Lakani does it in one of his ads. How far, how far do I have to go? Okay. So it's, you know, your, your feet are planted firmly. And, oh, yeah. Right? You can feel, you can actually feel the difference. It's crazy how you can feel the difference. the hero pose and Norman Cousins um, did a whole I don't know if it was a book or a movie called you can laugh your way back to health he he was ill and he would just watch funny movies all the time and laugh um, so there's something called the Hellman exercise that we do and we basically it's basically putting ourselves in someone else's shoes um, so I wrote down here WWJD what would Jose do <laughs> Because apparently he was a very strict teacher when teaching this. Um, so, you know, one of the nice things that Ken said is that at some points he even he struggled with some of the processes. Because, uh, oh wait, he's human too. Uh, but he kept at it and he said, if I can do it, you can do it. Just trust the process. So some people right away get some of the exercises and some people struggle with them. And he says, that that's okay. Just keep going. Just keep trying. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just keep doing it. It's like exercise, right? You're not going to go to the gym and branch past 300 pounds right away. You're going to start off with like light weights and then medium weights and then heavy weights. And you're going to over time, over time, over time. It's like practice. It's the same thing. 
learning these techniques is the same thing. That's why Jose also wanted to make sure that after you took it, that it was really inexpensive to repeat it because you could just keep going back. So th I remember being in the Toronto workshop with Stephen Dobos and there's people that were there and they said, oh yeah, I took it in the eighties with Jose. And they still have their little card with their number. And as long as you have your Silva number, you can take it anywhere in the world from anybody to repeat it. Now, it used to just be in person. Now, of course, since COVID and now there's Zoom, a lot of people do it on Zoom. I personally prefer to take it in person because I know if I was on Zoom, I'd be distracted by so many things. In person, for me, I'm in the workshop. I'm surrounded by all this other energy of all the other people attending that are focused on this program. And it's so good. Um, so then we, we talked about the organ system um, that Jose used and he used Edgar Casey. You might know him. He was the sleeping prophet as a model of what to do and what not to do as an empath because you got to have boundaries. Um, and you want to do one of the exercises is to put your hands out to keep your, the energy moving forward. Like, you know, you can feel it. And when you, there's different mudras, but we didn't go into the mudras. Ken's like, no, we can't, we don't, there's, he was teaching so much. He's like, yes, we can't have discussions on all these other things. Um, so there's the three finger technique that they teach. And then there's also the five finger technique so that where your finger, oh, this little pinky just doesn't want to go down. You want to have your pinkies down. And, um, he talked about in 1973, remember Ken was doing this since 1971. He talked about Dr. Richard McKenzie, who was a biofeedback specialist that they had on staff at the Silva method back in the day. How crazy cool is that? And um, Helene had a book in her library about biofeedback by the Greens. Um, and then what we do is something called casework where we uh, fill out a form, like we each filled out three forms about people in our lives that needed healing. And so you put their name, their full name, where they live, their age, um, whether they're male or female or gen whatever gender, you can put whatever that is down. And, um, and then their, their illness and symptoms. So what we do is one person is the guide and one person is the intuitive. And we go into our level and the person says, okay, now picture this person. They, I'm not going to do it here because we did it all afternoon on the Sunday, like basically from lunch right to almost close, we did casework. And it was really important for us to just start trusting our intuition. Sometimes we got nothing at all. Sometimes the stuff was really good. Sometimes it felt off. Um, when I started doing it, because I was, I took the course and assisting at the first parts, I wasn't getting anything at all. It took about three times before I started to get anything. And I was at about 80%. Um, so I did okay again. And again, it's one of those things. If you keep practicing, it's going to come. And, and Ken used the old dragnet line. Yes, he is in his seventies. Um, ma'am, just give me the facts. So it's whatever your intuition hits, whatever comes to mind, no matter how weird it sounds, just go with it. And I did that when we did the psychometry, my first hits, were right and then I second guessed myself and then I said something else and I should have gone with my first gut. And then at the end, both people, the guide and the intuitive, both send healing energy toward the person that needs it. Now what I found interesting was because I've been working with Stephen Dobos, he only does a couple during the day, but Ken really likes to promote this part of the program and feels it's the most important part of the program. like right from Jose. So he said, we're going to do 10. And the minute I saw, heard that my stomach tightened and I even wrote that down. Why did my stomach just tighten when I heard I had to do 10 cases? Why, why am I resisting stepping into this new skill set? Even though I've already been doing it and practicing it for 
almost two years now, a year and a half. Why? Why am I resisting it? That's kind of crazy. Um, so that was interesting. So it was a whole three hours of these case works. And, and Ken even said to me, you know, like he would watch, you know, he, he's guiding people. So he said to me, you know, go a little faster, go through them quicker. You know, he's giving advice. So eventually, again, it becomes rote. Um, he said it was the key to the Silva method. All techniques lead up to us tapping into our psychic abilities, connecting to our higher self and higher intelligence. That's what it was leading to. And keep practicing. Um, my psychic, I wrote down, my psychic muscles will get stronger. Just like going to the gym. And I wrote down this. Now, I have been lax in meditating every day. Um, I was good for a little bit and then I slacked off. It's like a lot of people go to the gym and they're regular and then they slack off and back and forth, especially when I was traveling because basically I traveled for two weeks solid and I was exhausted. So, and then when I was visiting friends, it just, it wasn't the environment. Meditate every day. How will my life change if I do? What a good question to ask yourself. And it's, and there's two types. So there's scarcity consciousness versus abundance consciousness. So I think I have, I'm pretty good in the abundance, but I think there's a few areas in my life that I could get better at it. You are far more than you believe you are. So good. And then he also talked about Peter um, Hercosti, her, um, her cost. Um, H E R K O S E, I think. I did a lot based on his pronunciation. Oh, thank you for the gifts. And it's interesting because I um, was listening to this and it's how you're projecting your energy towards others. So a lot of times we'll get together with friends and we'll talk to them about a problem that we're having and we'll say something and you're kind of frustrated and when you're letting go of this energy are you venting where it's like a chimney stack where you're venting it out the top or are you just dumping it all on that person now they have all this energy so watch how you're putting energy towards others um and ken ken rice a different ken he created silvacases.com is a great place to practice and Mind Valley also has a similar site. I don't know what the URL is. I, I gotta look that up. So um, that's a great place if you have taken the silver method and and are very comfortable with the case work and want to practice. That's a great place to practice. Um, repetition is key. Start start a new habit. So again, that's the way I can get back to my meditating every day is making a new habit. And then sustaining my progress. Uh, you get the manuals. I wrote no time like the present, no excuses. So I got to go over my manuals. Uh, review SLS and SIS, which is the Silva Life System and Silva Intuition System, and read and listen to podcasts. Apparently, um, there's some other podcasts on the Silva Method, so I'm going to go find those other teachers. Um, Ken also created Trust Your Intuition Academy and. Um, he gives some bonuses as part of taking the course with him. And then um, there's also other things that you can buy there that are separate. Um, so you can purchase uh, bundles 90 minutes each. And um, you can also hire him directly as a mentor. That's interesting. And then um, I wrote down here buddy system on WhatsApp because with the one in Canada, I'm part of the Silva graduates. Um, course a uh, whatsapp group and there's also one for meditating twice a day and then um, of course you can catch him on social media he's got facebook linkedin and instagram are his favorites i said youtube he has one but i think the the others are better now i did ask him i was thinking of coming back during um uh, to take it again in november and actually, Ken said, with all the work that I've been doing with Helene and Tag and taking it and assisting and taking the thing, I might be better off actually taking the uh, Silva Mastery Seminar December 7 and 8. So I've decided to go to that because he 
feels that um, I'm ready for that level. So that's kind of exciting. And there's also a manifesting course with uh, a Janine, I didn't catch her last name, she's from Australia. She's coming here to Canada, I don't know what dates, I think it's se September like s eight and nine or something. And then a couple weeks later, she's gonna be in Connecticut. So um, I'll put the links in the meeting. And, um, and then I had a coaching session with Ken, which was part of the um, bonuses that he gives. So I've got the, he gives you a 30 minute um, the long relax meditation that he voices which is really nice because he does have a very soothing voice so I've been using that and you get a coaching session and there's one more bonus I can't remember what it is but it's really beneficial and I highly 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 recommend taking it in either Connecticut or Chicago with Ken um, because he is a fantastic teacher. He has stories from back in the day. He was telling us things about Jose. He knew Helene Hansel. He was telling us, um, he actually certified. He was, he told me he was the one that certified Tag Powell and Tag's been gone a year now. So, um, and finally, I finally published Tag's first book, not his first book. I don't know what his first book was, his first book. I, I bought 10 from him and five audio programs. So I finally finished, I just published one of his books, my first book of his books, and one of the audio programs. So Money and You and Instant Money are now available. Yay. So it was book number 10 for me. And I'm hoping to have a few more out this year. It's very exciting stuff. And the next one that I'm working on, I'm gonna be doing the Audible of 83 uh, year old Sage and finishing prizes prizes everywhere I'm not going to do any other books until prizes prizes everywhere is out yay in the meantime I'm going to take the Silva method again next week and I'm going to be doing live streams on it again because each teacher has a slightly different style so I'm going to take similar style notes and I'm going to come back and talk about it um, and hopefully you would be interested in learning more about the Silva Method. If you are, there are free classes. I have a link on my blog, but also I'm gonna get in touch with Ken and add his date. So right now all the dates I have are for Stephen Dobos, but I'm also gonna add Ken's dates to the blog post about Helene Hatzel and going to a free intro class on it. So it's quite exciting that you can actually take um, if you've read In Contact with Other Realms, you'll read the story about Helene, how Helene got introduced to Jose Silva. And it was really almost at the very beginning of when he started teaching uh, live and in person. It was in 1965, right after, like months after they moved into the house she won. Um, so it's funny because a lot of people message me and say, well, you have to give Jose Silva credit for teaching her how to win all this stuff. And I'm like, she didn't even meet Jose until months after she moved into the house she won. She was doing all this stuff long before Jose. He just enhanced it. He just enhanced it. So anyway, just keep following me. Um, check out my, my blogs. I've been putting up a lot of stuff that was exclusive to Helene Hatzel. I don't have much from Tag because I didn't, I caught him literally at the end of his life. Like I met him six months before he passed away and he had COPD, he had um, a stroke and he was, his mind was a little Swiss cheesy. Like when we went to visit him, I really wanted to interview him and I realized it he wasn't in a good place to do that. Um, but he knew after seeing what I did with Helene's works, because he was Helene's second publisher, that I would um, honor his work and bring it to, uh, I was gonna say the masses, republish it so for a whole new audience. Like, uh, Helene's book was out of print for just over 30 years. His book was out of print for 42, the one that I did. It was last published in 1982. So, brand new to everybody. And it's quite exciting that um, you can learn today. Um, Stuart, um, I'm not really sure what the question is. Um, it's Tag Powell. I don't know who Stuart is. <laughs> um, I'll answer your question if you let me know. And 
Anyway, oh yes, thank you. You're welcome. And I, um, if you go to YouTube, so unfortunately on TikTok, I can't share some of the things very well. Um, but if you go to the U my YouTube channel, um, I have some audios, interviews, and um, lectures from Helene that were never previously published and also on my blog. Now, I put them also on my blog because YouTube sometimes de degrades the quality of the audio. And the problem is one tape. So first of all, I found one tape. I never found tape one. I only found tape two. And then when my audio producer tran like digitized it, he said, there's another tape. So it was a three tape set. I only ever found the second one. It had degraded so bad, I could hardly hear it was Helene. He managed to get all the data off it and then it snapped. That's how degraded this tape was. So I have put the audio file directly on my website. So that's the highest quality I could get. Some people say, oh, it's terrible. I can hardly hear it. I'm like, that's the best I could do. It's better not to do that. And ah, we have a little friend B here. Please go away. Um, and then not share it. And so unfortunately, I only have a few things from Tag, but a lot from Helene. And so as time goes on, I'm sharing them um, over time so that people can, can enjoy them. So just head over to wordsforwinning.com and click on blog and just start going back. Some of the big ones I have on my homepage, like her her missing chapter and her um, lost audio, lost lecture, they're right on the homepage. But I have other things like I found a file where I interviewed her because I kept thinking, how did I not interview her when I visited her? And I wish I had a, a digital camera that could have captured it like a video. But anyway, I had a little who made it? Maybe Samsung. It was like, or LG. It was like a little audio. It was like um, those little tape recorders people used to have, but it was digital. And so I recorded two interviews with her uh, while we were having tea. And I found them on my computer and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I had the webmaster clean them, the, my audio producer clean them up like because all the you know the static he cleaned them up um the best he could and they're really good so i put those on youtube and they're on my website so things like that and that was really cool because that's the one where helene talked about remote viewing and also astral sex like she was a funny lady like i wish i knew her when she was younger like i could imagine her back in the like when she was in her 40s and 50s where she was really into all this stuff she that she would have been fun to hang around fun 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 because she was a little quirky i'm a little quirky i think we could have been besties but um anyway i'm very blessed to be handed the torch and ha she basically opened this whole uh, silver world because I never would have gone down the silver path if it wasn't for her so she started me on that path and and then you know I just kept going to follow the doors that opened and that's what you got to do in life right it's not just me just keep going through the doors that keep openings I think um, uh, Matthew McConaughey wrote that book green lights right where he had green lights in his life and he knew that that's how he should have kept going and uh, we all need to look for our, our green lights. So stay tuned for more about um, the Silva Method, Helene Hadsel, and Tag Powell. And if you have any questions, um, DM me, leave a comment on a video, or um, email me. I, I'm easy to reach. 